tell you about butterflies? So some of the butterflies that you see here at Sage Hen, you'll encounter along the roads and they are, do what's called puddling. They come and they visit wet spots in mud where a stream might cross the road or um, a puddle just builds up and things like that. And um, what happens is the butterflies come there and they drink the mud and they get minerals from that. And some people have observed that it's mostly males that congregate in those areas, but we don't know a whole lot about why that is. There's some evidence that it's males only because they actually do that to increase the reproductive output. Butterflies are going to be really common in meadows, and a lot of the nectar feeding butterflies will be out there feeding on flowers. You can detect migration if you see large numbers of butterflies um, in the same space, sort of moving through during, at the same time, and see one after another going the same direction. Um, it's a little bit different than just standing in a meadow and seeing butterflies flitting about. There's a real directionality to that. and. Um, some of them on a good year, uh, California sisters down in the desert will have a big boom in population and then they'll migrate up um, over the Sierras or, and maybe down around the Sierras and then they'll come up the coast. The monarch butterfly is a good example of a migrating butterfly and there's a flyway from um, up into Oregon and down along the coast down into Santa Cruz that where they overwinter in that area. One of the ideas is to just go out and try to find more host plants and things like that. And it's, it's also to retreat from um, inhospitable places in the winter, just the same as birds do. Um, the you know, idea with birds is that they go up into the Arctic and the north to take advantage of the big boom in population of the insects to feed their babies. And then once it gets cold, that they move, they move back down to the south. So it could be something like that that's happened with some butterfly populations is that in the winter they've died off. And so some of the individuals started moving to the south and um, then their babies would come north the next year and that sort of thing. The monarch's a little bit of a different case because it'll have multiple generations that are moving north and then the ones that are the farthest north actually have never seen Mexico or California and then they fly all the way back down without ever having seen the uh, place where they fly to. So it's a pretty unique thing. So some of the butterflies that um, have, been, have been observed along the roadways puddling are in the genus Nymphalis, and then also we've seen some that are in the genus Polygonia. And both of those, as far as I'm aware, overwinter as adults. And so they, they, um, they come out you know, sometime during the summer as adults, and they're flying around doing their thing. And then they'll find little crevices in wood and things once it starts to get cold in September and October. And once it starts to get really cold, they will stop coming out um, during the day, and then they just overwinter as adults like that. And then once it warms up in the spring to about 60 degrees or so, they'll, they'll start to come out. And so that may be why on some days you see large congregations of them at the mud is that they've been for a couple of months um, tucked away without moisture. And so the temperature comes up and then all of a sudden they need to get out and find those nutrients and minerals and, and moisture to, to keep themselves going. And then they'll fly off and find mates and lay eggs on the plants around here. And, continue their cycle. What's your title? Oh, doctor. a uh, perspective doctor. <laughs> um, it's a, uh, what do they call it? It's a PhD candidate. PhD candidate. That's yeah, what it's called. Yeah.